day. But if your pet runs off or you find somebody else's lost pet, call 362-6144 to report that lost or found pet for the next Pet Patrol. Pet Patrol airs throughout the day as part of your update news, and it's absolutely free. That number again for Pet Patrol, 362-6144. Your number one source of news and information in LaPorte County is 96.7 The Eagle at hometownnewsnow.com. Welcome to Sound Off on 96.7 The Eagle, LaPorte County's original social media. Sound Off is a public interest forum that encourages your voice to be heard on the topics and issues impacting our local communities. For the next 30 minutes, we invite you to be part of the conversation by calling 219-362-0522. And you can now text your questions to the Liquor Vault on air line or by email to soundoff at 967theeagle.com. This is a topic-based program, and we ask that you keep your comments brief, concise, and related to the topic being discussed. The views expressed on Sound Off are those of the host or callers and do not represent the opinion of 96.7 The Eagle, Spoon River Media, LLC, or the sponsors. The Liquor Vault on air line is now open for your calls or texts at 219-362-0522. This is Sound Off on 96.7 The Eagle. Hello, friends. Today is September 13th, and you're listening to Sound Off only on 96.7 The Eagle. I'm your host, Nate Laux. It's good to have you with us. On today's show, we're going to be talking about how you would rate the job that Eric Holcomb has done handling the COVID-19 pandemic in Indiana. Do you think he's done a good job as governor, a bad job? Do you wish he would be doing more? Some governors are mandating masks in schools. Others are banning masks in schools. Some are putting their state on lockdown with the higher COVID-19 transmission rates, while others are not. So what do you think? How has the governor done handling this pandemic? How do you think the governor has done, rather? If you have opinions about this, I want to hear it. Call or text the Liquor Vault on airline at 219 219- Three six two zero five two two, or email me at soundoff at ninety six seven theeagle dot com. Before we get to this on on this day in history, I want to congratulate our team here at ninety six seven the Eagle for raising forty six or forty seven thousand dollars for our deserving children's rough set. What an amazing day! And thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you to everyone that participated in that. It's amazing what happens when a community comes together, when everyone does a little, so much gets done. And I know many of our listeners participated in that, and we're just so grateful for you from the bottom of our hearts. Congrats, yes, to Dennis Sedell for doing such a great job leading that again this year. So you and your donation helped hundreds of kids have a great Christmas this year, and it means a great deal to us. All right, on this day in history, it was on this day 36 years ago that a video game would change the gaming world forever. It told the story of the peaceful mushroom people being invaded by an evil tribe of turtles. The mushroom people princess is the only one that can undo the magic spell upon the mushroom people, but alas, she is presently in the hands of the king of the turtles. But wouldn't you know it? A kind man hears of their plight and comes to the rescue to free the princess and save the kingdom. This is the story of Mario, Princess Toadstool, the Bowser, and the Koopa. Today, Super Mario Brothers was released in Japan 36 years ago. I spent countless hours playing Super Mario Brothers growing up. For many Gen Xers and older millennials, it's the game that defines their video gaming experience. All right, and now the rest of the show. On today's show, we're going to be talking about how you would rate the job that Eric Holcomb has done handling the COVID-19 pandemic in Indiana. Do you think he's done a good job so far, a bad job, maybe somewhere in the middle? Do you wish he would be doing more? Do you wish he would be maybe mandating masks in school? I've seen some of that online. Do you wish he would, you know, encourage you more of the kind of, you know, uh, governmental opening things or maybe, you know, legislating, uh, encouraging more legislation for that. Some governors are mandating masks in schools. Others are banning masks in schools. What do you think? Again, so we're going to talk about what you think about Governor Eric Holcomb and how he's done during the pandemic. If you have an opinion about this, I want to hear it today. Call or text the Liquor Vault on airline at 219-362-0522 or email me at soundoff at 967theagle.com. We got some callers. Let's get to our first caller. Hello, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. What's your thoughts on this? Hey, good afternoon, Nate. Uh, sorry, sorry, I've got to talk uh, kind of soft here a little bit. I'm in an appointment, but uh, listening uh, on my phone. And my take is, is I thought he started out like a ball of fire. I was very, very impressed with uh, with Governor Holcomb. 
And then he just kind of weaseled out, in my opinion, and uh, started saying, well, we're going to let uh, the communities or the other officials, uh, you know, make the decisions. And I feel like, uh, again, we are in we are in a position right now that we was a position so long ago that we absolutely did not want to be in. And now uh, I think somebody has to step up. And if it's not going to be local officials or if it's not going to be the Fed, if it's not going to be the state, then I think local officials have to. But, boy, oh, boy, I, I was really, really impressed. Honest to goodness, and I told a lot of people, I was watching him on Wednesday afternoons, 1.30 Central Standard Time, doing his hour show and giving all the information and the, his whole team. Great. Today, no, sir, because uh, we, we, we need some more guidance. And I know that a lot of people from the you know American people don't want to hear that. But all I can tell you, man, is, is you, you, you check with the health department and see what's going on around us. And, yes, we need uh, – it was great to begin with, but now it's like, oh, man, step up. Somebody needs to. That's my thoughts, man. Hey, thanks so much for calling, Jeff. Have a good day, buddy. Yeah, so we're getting your thoughts today on the show. Uh, we're having a conversation about Eric Holcomb's handling of the pandemic. What do you think? How has Indiana been doing? Do you wish the governor would do more? Do you think he should be doing less? What are your thoughts on that? Let's get to another caller. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for calling. Sound off. What are your thoughts? Do you think we're having a? Uh, do you think Governor Holcomb's doing a good job handling this pandemic? Well, when he started and tried to start with the mask mandates and lockdowns and everything else to control our lives last year, that was terrible. That was wrong. But now I will give him credit now where he is actually standing up to President Biden and his goal of nationalization of all businesses, such as Hitler did during World War, during, uh, the World War II when Germany made all the businesses comply with what the government tells them they can or cannot do. Uh, so like I said, at least he's standing up for us now. This should be an individual's choice. Um, it's that simple. This this is not a virus. They treat, keep trying to compare it to smallpox, to polio, and everything else. This virus is a man-made, weaponized virus with one goal in mind, population control. And if you fall in line with that, that is your opinion. You're entitled to that. If you want to wear the mask, you want to get vaccinated, that's fine. That should be enough to protect you. And I hope Mr. Holcomb continues with this fight against the president like the other 19 governors so far. So that way, the people can make the choice what they're supposed to do. But I also do not agree that we should let these locals take much control either. Um, they, 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 they've proven beyond time and time again that they are not capable of managing any kind of crisis in LaPorte County. So just my opinion. Thank you. All right. Thanks for calling the show. Thanks for giving your opinion. We're talking about Eric Holcomb and what you think he's done here in Indiana handling pandemic. If you think he's done a great job, we'd love to hear from you. If you think he's done a, a, a poor job, we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, according to reporting from Fox 59 in Indianapolis, they released a statement that Governor Eric Holcomb made about uh, President Biden's uh, essentially, it, 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 it's really, honestly, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It's irritating me because people say it's a vaccine mandate. It's not a vaccine mandate. If it was a vaccine mandate, everyone would have to be vaccinated. What it is is a vaccine encouragement with the option to also be tested if you don't want to get uh, vaccinated. So anyway, so Ger Governor Eric Holcomb said this about that. He said, I believe the vaccine is the number one tool that will protect us and our loved ones against COVID-19. It is the tool that will end the pandemic. However, I strongly believe it's not the state or federal government's role to issue a vaccine mandate upon citizens and private businesses, which is I, I, I do want to push back a little bit on the governor there because we do make our kids get vaccinated to go to school. So, you know, do we need to revisit that as well? This is the approach our administration has uh, taken all along. The announcement from President Biden is a bridge too far. Private businesses should be able to look at their own mission, their staff and their goals and make the decision best for them that will keep their doors open. I believe it is fundamentally a citizen's right to choose whether or not to get the vaccine. While I wish everyone would get the vaccine, we are a country built on this uh, exact type of freedom. Again, so if I'm reading him correctly, the governor, he's saying, yes, he got the vaccine. You should get the vaccine. Everyone should get the vaccine. But he doesn't feel comfortable mandating it. And again, I want to I want to push back because I wish, the uh, you know, again, political nuance is not a thing except here on Sound Off. But um, I wish the governor would also 
acknowledge that this is not just a vaccine mandate. This is also businesses being allowed to test their employees as well. So if you don't want the uh, vaccine, fine. It's just you need to be tested once a week to make sure that, um, again, nobody's spreading COVID-19 around. So again, we're getting your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think Governor Eric Holcomb, Indiana's governor, is doing a good job handling the pandemic here in our state, our beloved state, or do you think he's doing a bad job? We'd love to hear from you. We're going to take a real quick break because it is almost 1230. I'm hoping that you're going to call us, get these phone lines going. we got one call on wait. We're going to get to you first when we get back. But you can call us, 219-362-0522, or, or text me. And uh, I'd love to hear from you today on the topic on having a conversation about Eric Holcomb's handling of the pandemic. Hey, stay where you're at. We're going to be right back here on 96.7 The Eagle. At Bell Tire, we start with the lowest tire price, period. Then we make it feel even lower with free lifetime flat repairs, tire rotations, and alignment checks. And then even lower with 0% financing for 12 months. We also offer a contact-free experience, including stay-in-your-vehicle service and touch-free transactions. So come see your guy at Bell Tire. He'll give you the lowest tire price, period, and more for your money. Bell Tire. See store at belltire.com for details. Restrictions apply. You might know MD Wise as a provider of health insurance, and we are. But we feel called to do way more than that. Like arranging free rides for those who don't have another way to get to the doctor, the dentist, or the drugstore. We also know healthy food is important, so we arrange free rides to the grocery and farmer's market, too. These are just a few of our extra services, because caring for Hoosiers beyond insurance could be the wisest thing we do. mdwise.org slash more. 10 for $10 is back at Meijer. Buy 10 items and get the 11th free. Save more across the store with 10 for 10 savings on things like extra large avocados, Chobani Greek yogurt, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, and Meijer Essential Paper Towels. Plus, get free pickup on orders over $35. Enjoy more savings with 10 for 10 at Meijer. Exclusions apply. See all the deals in the Meijer app. Hey, who's hungry? Because I've got a deal for you. Dennis and Elle here to introduce you something new to the Morning Mayhem. Every weekday at 6.55, it's Denny's Diner. Yep, Joe and I will cook up some trivia questions, and if you have the correct answer, you'll be the winner of a $20 gift card from either JJ Side Out Bar and Grill, the Burger Bar and Grill, Ringer Sports Bar and Grill, Nowhere Bar and Grill, or T-Berry's Diner. So join us weekdays for Denny's Diner at 6.55 on the Morning Mayhem for your chance to win here on 96.7 The Eagle. Thank you for tuning in to Sound Off. You can now text or email your questions directly to the studio. Call or text 362-0522 or email your questions to soundoff at 967theeagle.com. This is Sound Off. Welcome back to the show. So glad to have you with us today on a beautiful Monday in LaPorte County, Indiana. Today we're talking about Governor Eric Holcomb. What do you think he's doing or how do you think he's doing rather as the governor of indiana during this pandemic do you think he's doing a great job we've had uh two callers so far one that thought again he wasn't doing a great job at the beginning now he's doing a great job and we had another caller that said he he was doing a great job at the beginning and now he's not and so we're getting your opinions on this if you'd like to call in and talk 219-362-0522 you can also text us 219-362-0522 or email us as sound off at 967theeagle.com let's get to a caller Welcome to the show. So glad to have you on the show today. What's your thoughts on this? How do you think Governor Eric Holcomb's doing during the pandemic? Well, I have to agree with the one caller that uh, he started out very good with the pandemic, and now I think he's just playing the political card. Um, you know, Biden's a Democrat. He's a Republican. Uh, so that's my thought on it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for calling. We're getting your opinions today on what you think of Governor Eric Holcomb and how you think he's doing in this pandemic. And if you think he's doing a great job, we'd love to hear from you. If you think he's doing an OK job, we'd love to hear from you. If you wish he'd do more, there are some people that wish he would kind of institute a statewide mask mandate. I know from locally, there's some school board members that I know would appreciate a little more guidance from the state. Uh, it would maybe help them have a little more guidance locally. I know some local officials wish that there was a little more guidance from the state as well or a little more leadership. 
But again, there's a lot of people that say, no, I want you out of this. Just stay out of it. Local governments decide what to do, or local people even, and, you know, keep doing what you're doing here. So we're getting your opinion on this. You're welcome to call the Liquor Vault on airline at 219-362-0522, or give me a text, 219-362-0522. So we've got a couple calls or a couple texts that have come in. Here's a, a, a Facebook comment here. He needs to stand his ground and let us keep our freedom. The governor has done a great job. We know the risks. Let us live free to decide for ourselves. I agree. No local control either. Some of us don't do well with vaccines and are wanting to keep our rights. What about all the false positives? All right, here's another comment. Uh, no, he's not. Plain and simple. Well, that that's an easy comment. Thank you so much for leaving that comment. And then here's another one, Nate. Yes, vaccinations are required for school. Yeah, I, I do. I do know that much. I don't know a lot, but I do know that much because I had to take my son to get a vaccine before school started this year. The COVID jab is not a vaccine by definition. I, I don't know what you mean by that. It's not a vaccine by definition. It has not had enough testing done. It, it has been approved by the FDA, and we don't know the long-term effects. Well, it has been approved by for, by the FDA. Certainly, we don't know. If, if the requirement for long-term effects is, you know, 10, 20 years, certainly we don't have that. But we do know that it, it all the testing that they've put through, the great scientists that have tested these things, and I, I know some scientists um, that have explained to me the process, it's actually fairly remarkable what humans, humans can do in science is just amazing. The testing swabs, this comment goes on to say, contain a carcinogen. The more times you get a swab stuck up your nose... You are introducing cancer-causing chemicals into your respiratory system. I, I don't know if that's true. Honestly, it might be. I, I've not heard that. I, I've not I've not heard anything that would suggest that to be true. Um, but again, thank you so much for leaving a comment. Thanks for calling. Thanks for texting. We're getting your thoughts today on how you think Governor Eric Holcomb is doing uh, handling the pandemic. You're welcome to call me, text me. 219-362-0522 or email sound off at 967theeagle.com. Indiana schools are getting an incentive towards requiring face masks in classrooms intended to slow down the number of COVID-19 outbreaks among students around the state. You've probably read this. Um, it was on hometownnewsnow.com, I know. We've got other reporting partners that have done it as well. Essentially what the state is doing because the governor doesn't want to institute a a mask mandate, what they've done is kind of go a little bit behind it and say, instead of a mask mandate, what we're going to do is we're encouraging masks to be worn in schools because there's such high COVID-19 numbers. And if your school, like Michigan City, wears masks, you won't have to follow the contact tracing uh, rules that schools that don't have masks. So for instance, there's local schools here. I know that the superintendent and, and, and different principals have had to, let's say, drive a bus or they've had to serve lunch because there's so many employees out based on contact tracing. If you get contact traced, you're out for a, a certain amount of time. Or if you have COVID, you're out for, for two weeks. And many of the school systems don't have enough staff, just like businesses. I know of a restaurant that had to close this weekend because they had a couple staff members out with COVID. They don't have enough cooking staff. They don't have enough wait staff to manage a restaurant if that happens. And just like schools have the same problem. And so they kind of switch around, try to get people that might not necessarily do that job regularly to do it. And so the governor has said, listen, if you encourage everyone and you mandate masks in your local school system, be it, you know, Westville schools or Laporte schools or New Prairie schools, we will no longer force you to contact trace like we do right now. So that's Governor Herrick Holcomb's current idea, and that's the executive order he put out last Wednesday. And it's gotten a lot of, again, uh, you know, essentially some people have criticized it as forcing the hands of schools. He's certainly, I don't think, trying to force the hands of schools. He's just saying it's it's an encouragement to mask for schools, but he's not forcing schools to do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But if you do do it, there are benefits for doing it. So we've got another caller. Let's get to another caller before we go on break again today. Thanks so much for calling. Thanks for listening. Glad to have you on the show. What's your thoughts on this? How do you think Governor Eric Holcomb's doing during the pandemic? Hi, Nate. I I think he's played a whole lot of wait and see, uh, letting other governors around kind of dictate what he's going to do. And when it comes to being vaccinated, the people that are screaming the loudest about being vaccinated and going to get vaccinated are the ones that scream the loudest about my body, my choice when it comes to murdering babies. So 
where does the line stand when it's my body, my choice when it comes to vaccines? And what about the people like myself who have already had COVID who are 13 times less likely to spread the, mm-hmm. the thing, yet we're still mandated to get vaccinated? It's it's a troubling thing for me. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's I think one of the one of the hardest things to deal with, and I think one of the greatest points of, of contention is that idea that um, we do know that if you get antibodies, COVID nineteen antibodies from having COVID nineteen, you seem to be uh, you know have some kind of immunity for quite a while. So I get the the pushback in saying so. If that's the case, why why should I have to get vaccinated? Because again, I've had it, I've lived through it, I've got I've got the immunity scars to prove it. So why should I have to get vaccinated? I think that's a I think that's a fair point that I, I haven't heard a ton of uh, governmental leaders necessarily address, other than just saying you know we prefer again and and, and it's true if you get vaccinated you'll have even more coverage and more immunity. But still, I understand people saying um, the idea that again I've had it. I don't think I need a vaccine, these kind of things. All right, here's a couple more texts we're going to get into if we can real quick. Uh, Here's a text we received on our text line. How do you think Governor Eric Holcomb is doing during the pandemic? Here's a text we received. Horrible. It's not up to the government to keep us healthy. All right, here's another one. I think Governor Eric Holcomb has played wait and see what other people do, not making any real decisions for himself. The same people who push the vaccine on me and my body. I think this is our last caller, actually. They're the same people who scream my body, my choice when it comes to murdering babies. Hypocrisy on full display. All right. Thanks so much for texting and calling. Uh, You win caller of the day. Here we go. Uh, Governor Eric Holcomb started out okay. Now he's just trying to please everyone. He needs to take a stand, have more mandates. Otherwise, we'll never be done with COVID. And I, I understand that opinion as well. I'm I'm getting tired of it. I'm tired of COVID. I'm tired of everything. But yet, I know my wife is an ICU nurse here locally, and they've got a ton of COVID patients, young COVID patients. You know, 40s, 50s. I didn't think that was that was you know that young until I I'm almost 40, and I'm thinking that's too young to die. 40s and 50s, and so uh, it, it just seems too much. And so. Um, even though this summer we thought we were making some good progress and numbers were down low and, and many of us started, you know, uh, again, kind of feeling like we're getting back to some kind of normalcy, the numbers have spiked again. Very recently, the last week, they've started going down again, so hopefully we'll continue to follow that trend. But it does seem like this is the never-ending pandemic. And so I think for some scientists, some governmental leaders, uh, even locally here, the way to get over this thing and hopefully the way that we're going to get better out of this is to get everyone vaccinated and that's their solution to this all right we're going to get to let's get to one more caller dennis before we go to break here thank you so much for calling thanks for listening glad to have you on the show what do you think uh how do you think governor eric holcomb has done so far during this pandemic i think right now he's doing all right making a personal choice again if uh if you want to force people to have that uh the shot, then we should force them to no more tobacco products because secondhand smoke is also dangerous. And again, with drinking and driving, we should outlaw to no alcohol as well because I think we can both agree how dangerous that can be in, in the um, collisions that take place, especially across Highway 20. So if you're going to make it fair with one, make it fair across the board. Uh, no so, more alcohol, so are you, no are, you more to- are you are you advocating for alcohol to be banned and smoking to be banned as well? If you're going to be forced people to take the shot and ban everything else so that it's fair across the board so that there's no more danger to the public anymore at any place about that. Yeah. yeah so I, I think I'll leave it all up to people's choice all across the board myself. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. All right. Again, the one against abortion, I think I'm on his side 100%. Um, keep the babies alive. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks so much for calling and thanks for listening. Here's a couple of comments on our Facebook as I'm watching. Thanks so much for commenting. We encourage you to share this uh, and, you know, again, encourage people to listen. This is one of the only and probably one of the biggest uh, uh, conversation shows we have here in LaPorte County. And we we love that you listen. We love that you participate in this, whether you call or you text or you participate on Facebook. So thank you so much. And we hope that we can create a conversation, not just yelling back and forth. If we need anything in America, it's time to listen and learn from each other. Here's a, a comment based on an earlier comment made. Uh, thank you so much for this. Aren't the swabs cleaned? Medical swabs? 
How can be, they be cancer causing? Yeah, I don't think they are. Uh, honestly, I think there was maybe a rumor that maybe a, a, a texter or a Facebook commenter um, maybe believed. I know for a fact that's not true that they are clean swabs. Um, here's another one. So that person isn't against vaccine, but it's against the swabs. Again, kind of a, I don't believe that the swabs um, are causing cancer. I think there would be a great uh, litigation if that was. Here's another comment from Facebook. Dozens of vaccinations are already mandated and have been for many years for school attendance and for those in the military. People who are objecting now have already received mandated vaccinations in their lifetime. They are mandated to control diseases that will kill and cripple. The only way to control COVID is to have everyone vaccinated. Thank you so much for leaving that comment. I know I've got a, a friend in the military, and I asked him, so, you know, again, with the being mandated in the military, he said, well, he said, Nate, I've taken so many vaccines in my life being in the military. He said, I pretty much just let him stick me, you know, with the vaccine, and I don't even ask what it is anymore, and we just go on with that. So all right, let's get to a caller before break. Hello. Thank you so much for calling. Thanks for listening. What's your thoughts on this? How do you think Governor Eric Holcomb is doing during the pandemic? Oh, you're not on the line anymore. All right. Thanks so much for calling. Thanks for listening. What's your thoughts on this? How do you think Eric Holcomb is doing during the pandemic? Well, hello, Nate. Hey, bud. Uh, I think that he's done good. Uh, whether or not he should be doing more, that's open for debate. But one thing about him that I really respect is that he didn't call it a hoax. He didn't downplay it. He realized the seriousness of this pandemic and uh, my hat's off to the governor for that um yeah there is so much with this vaccine uh i'm fully vaccinated uh, and i did have covid and uh, yes you have antibodies for a while but they wane over time and there's a theory that your t-cells will still recognize the the coronavirus and uh, go to work on it if you're reinfected but there have been people that have caught coronavirus at least twice and um, i talked to a young person in laporte his he claimed his mother had had it three times and got sick really sick all three times so i don't know and then talked to my granddaughter yesterday she's 21 she had it and was very sick with it she lost a friend that was like 24 or 27 died with the virus uh my other granddaughter is 17 she got it a year ago and was asymptomatic so you don't know where it's going to go if you get it that's the whole thing and as long as people do not get vaccinated this thing will just do what viruses do uh mutate and my greatest concern with that is that if we get a mutant uh, of this that maybe bypass our vaccinations to where they're not not effective you know uh we've lost a lot in this country uh, there used to be a thing called the common good and uh i think we've lost that over the years and, and that's tragic for our, our nation so i don't know <laughs> i'm rambling uh anyhow yeah as far as the governor i think he's done well all right thanks so much for calling i appreciate it all right, we're having a conversation today about Eric Holcomb and how you think he's done during the pandemic. We've heard lots of different opinions, and I've enjoyed them all. Thanks so much for calling and being a part of this. We're going to take a quick break. Lots of show left. If you have an opinion on this, you're welcome to call or text me, 219-362-0522, or give me an email, soundoff at 967theeagle.com. I'd be happy to read your, your email or your comment as well. So we're going to take a really quick break. Keep it right here on 96.7 The Eagle. Get ready for fall fun at Garwood Orchards all September and all October. You don't want to miss out on everything we have going on. You pick apples, pumpkins, there's sunflowers, a variety of vegetables, tomatoes and peppers. Plus at our market, freshly made donuts, a full line of produce and jams and jellies. There's fresh apple cider that we make right on the farm and our own hand-dipped caramel apples. You don't want to miss making a trip to Garwood's on 50 South near Pinola, just west of LaPorte. GarwoodOrchard.com. Your hometown credit union, people helping people, First Trust Credit Union. 
The season of fall can be beautiful, but falling for financial scams is never a pretty thing. That's why First Trust Credit Union is looking out for your financial security. When you have an account with First Trust, you have the assurance of ID Safe Choice on your account, daily monitoring of account activity, electronic alerts and notifications, and secure 24-7 online banking. You can even lock and unlock your debit card instantly. So say no to fraud and let First Trust Credit Union help you keep your money safe and secure. Open your account today in Michigan City, LaPorte, Valparaiso, or Wheatfield. Call 800-276-6161 or visit us online at firsttrustcu.com. Members can enroll in ID Safe Choice for a low monthly fee of $2. First Trust is federally insured by NCUA. Your hometown credit union. People helping people. First Trust Credit Union. 96.7 The Eagle. I'm Dennis Sedell reminding you to join not only me, but Stan Maddox, Joe Happel, and Wayne Mahar for the Morning Mayhem weekdays, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. Now, we've got jokes, we've got music, we've got information, of course, we've got news and weather, and, of course, we want you. It's the Morning Mayhem weekdays, Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. right here on your home for country music variety, 96.7 The Eagle. Your forecast on 96. Seven Eagle brought to you by Harmon Expert Auto Service. If you're looking for a local and quality auto repair company, then look no further than Harmon Expert Auto with two locations in LaPorte, 308 Washington or 111 Brighton Streets. Visit their website at HarmonExpertAutoService.com or call 325 0444. Michiana Weather. A spotty shower storm is possible this afternoon, otherwise, sunny breaks with highs in the mid 80s. For tonight, partly cloudy with isolated showers or storms, 67 furlough. From the Weather Center at hometownnewsnow.com. I'm meteorologist Paul Probably. Right now, 80. Your opinion matters. We invite you to share it by calling or texting the Liquor Ball on air line at 362-0522. That's 362-0522. Now, back to sound off on 96.7 The Eagle. Welcome back to the show, everyone, for our final segment of today's Sound Off. We're talking about Governor Eric Holcomb and how you think he's been doing during this pandemic. Hey, I want to also invite you on Friday. We're going to have Mark Schreiber, the director of our LaPorte City Parks Department. And I think he's going to bring Brett Benversi with him, too. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening with the Parks Department, but also the Civic Auditorium. There's some concerts coming up. I know they're going to maybe start doing some more events there and things like that for your enjoyment. So we're going to have a conversation about that. If you have any questions about the Parks Department or the Civic Auditorium, we'll certainly be able to answer those and talk about them on Friday. A couple comments here. Holcomb don't know what he is doing. He's putting everyone at risk. This is from online here. I think he's done a good job. He didn't jump to please everyone. I still feel it should be our right to choose my body, my choice. The government does not get to play God. I know the risks. If I wish to take that risk, then let me. If someone wants to get vaccinated, good for them. All right, here's another one. Holcomb is basically saying, I know people should be vaccinated, but I did like how he did the daily updates uh, the IDO, IDOH, however, um, uh, one more here. The difference between the dozen of vaccines to send kids to school, as someone noted, and this vaccine is the other's work. Yeah. All I can say is based on anecdotal uh, data. I'm not a, I'm not a sociologist. I'm not a data scientist. I'm not a medical doctor, though. I like to play one on sound off. All I know is based on what people I know who are nurses, including my wife, including people I know and doctors and everything. People are asking, can't you still get COVID if you've been vaccinated? And the answer is yes, you can. But, but by and large, they are not seeing serious cases of COVID that are leading to death. And let us not mistake, death is not the only bad thing that can happen out of COVID. I know there have been cases here locally. I know people that have long haul symptoms, these kind of things. People aren't in general, not to say you can't find a case or two, but in general, getting the worst of COVID when they've been vaccinated. Now you can say, well, they're trading whatever vaccine is in the vaccination you're afraid of. Um, but the reality is, is that is true. 90 some percent of those in the hospital with COVID right now that are in the ICU, serious cases, people that are on death's doorstep have not been vaccinated. And so we do know that. That's a data point we do have. That doesn't mean you should get vaccinated or not vaccinated, but that is a data point. All right, let's get to a call. Welcome to the show. So glad to have you. Thanks for being here. What's your thoughts on Governor Eric Holcomb and how he's doing during this pandemic? Hey, good afternoon, Nate. Hey, buddy. Um, I think he's doing all right. Um, you, you, you can't have the government hold your hand over everything. I mean, I'm vaccinated. 
but there are. Do you, you, know, do you have a, a I, weird I, ear growing out of your forehead or anything? Um, I got two noses now, but other than that, um, <laughs> no. I mean, you know, like I said, we grew up taking vaccine vaccines. We go to school, like you said, your kid, my kids, they all have to take vaccines. And now, now that uh, you know they have approved it, you, you shouldn't really kind of hesitate like you know you did before. But like I said, I think he's doing a good job on that part. Because he, he doesn't, you know, want to overstep the government, you know. Yeah. It's the it's the people for the, you know, we the people for the people, not sure. we are the government and you listen to us, you know. Um, but the, the weird thing is about uh, Biden's mandate or whatever you want to call it, kind of like a bypass, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> certainly, you could say, it's it. certainly with the intention uh, to get more people vaccinated. But there is an out on right. that, right? You can but, just, you but, could choose but, testing if you want. But the weird thing about his thing is, you know, any company over 100 employees has to follow suit, right? That's the but yeah. That's how he le- he's it. letting he's letting the post office employees opt out. Now, what what's the sense behind that? Yeah, I don't know. I saw something about that briefly. I have not had a chance to dig into that. Yeah. Um, well, but it's, yeah, it's I, called it's called the union. <laughs> that's what it's called. You know, I'm sure the union fought it or somebody something sure. like that. You know, sure. But why? You know, those people are walking around with mail, putting it in our box, a lot of them on our door or on our, or on our roadway. Um, why wouldn't they have to do it? Oh, I, you know, I, I 100% mean, agree. If you're going to do it with, and I, I do know that the unions were one of the sticking points as I kind of followed some of the negotiations during this and, you know, as they were talking about this potentially happening over the last couple of weeks, I, I do know that the unions were a sticking point there, right? And he seemed to... Uh, the administration seemed to get some of the other unions on, but it doesn't. I think you're probably right. It's the postal workers union that said, "No, we're not going to. We're not going to mandate our employees." And the, the weird thing about you guys talking about politics, you know, it shouldn't be involved. But aren't most unions run by Democratic? You know, that, that they most people that are in unions supposedly vote Democrat, right? Uh, you know, I think so that, that that was that was weird. more true that's... before. I think one of the things that they've studied is I think Trump got a lot of union uh, uh, voters as well, but uh, because he was no, promising that's a whole other that's yeah. a whole other topic. Why yeah. you got that? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but I think I think no, no, by and large don't, you're don't, right. Don't, yeah. don't get me going on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let someone else. Fill in. <laughs> Thanks so much for All calling, right, buddy. Thanks. Hey, Thank have you, a good day. All Thanks. Right. You- All right, so we're talking about Governor Eric Holcomb and how you think he's been doing as the governor during this pandemic. Um, And so we're just talking about that. What do you think? We're getting some texts, some comments in. I appreciate everyone listening today and commenting. Uh, I truly do. This is an important conversation, and we can have these civilly, just like we've done here. All right, he's. I think he's doing the best as he can. This is science, and it changes daily, and there are so many reviews from different countries going on with this is uh, he is listening to everything. This vaccine was designed to help ease the symptoms. If you got COVID, it was not designed to stop the spread, as that's what the masks are for. Even those that have the vaccine doesn't know when or if it's working, and that is why they are calling for a booster. But unless you get your... I, d- I don't know what that word is, uh, tested. You won't know if the vaccine is working. Um, so again, I think you're right. Uh, the vaccine doesn't mean that you are immune totally from COVID-19. It certainly helps with immunity, but it, it does take down the serious repercussions of COVID-19. And we do know enough that it is doing that. It's doing what they say it's doing. All right, here we go. Uh, people not getting shots or spreaders like typhoid Mary. All right, thanks so much for texting. Thanks for calling. We're talking today. Uh, we just got a couple minutes left. If you want to call in, you're welcome to 219-362-0522. We're talking about Eric Holcomb's handling of the pandemic. Uh, what was interesting to me as we followed this, and we've been following this on the show, if you're just listening now, we, we try to follow what our legislators doing, our local legislators, so we can, again, hold um, our legislators, who I all like, but we want to hold them accountable on the show and these kind of things. But um, if you remember, right, earlier in the year, Eric Holcomb blocked a bill supported by local legislators, like uh, Representative Pressel supported this bill, other other uh, representatives did as well, uh, re- more Republican representatives. But they, he blocked a bill that would limit the authority of county or city health officials to essentially put mass mandates or different things without having some kind of local legislative approval. 
The governor said he believed it was prudent to avoid any unnecessary disruption or bureaucracy or wholesale changes to our existing uh, local public health authorities, especially during a pandemic. Essentially saying, you know, again, if you want to change this thing, let's change it, but let's wait until after a global pandemic is over, maybe. He says, right now, these are the words of Governor Eric Holcomb, right now it is critical that we maintain our local health expertise, flexibility, and all the tools needed to respond. We must not do anything that jeopardizes this as our heroic lo local health officials remain critical in the months to come as we accelerate our recovery and work to vaccinate many more Hoosiers. Republican legislators, though, again, tired of Indiana's lockdowns and things like this, uh, hearing from some of their constituents, said they prefer the local legislators, um, which is typically your county commissioner, uh, be the ultimate say on local health decisions, not unelected departments. Though Holcomb did veto that bill. He did not let it go through. There is a veto-proof majority in our state legislator, and the legislator overruled his veto, and the law went into effect. So I've heard some people upset at our local health department for not doing more. You have to understand, uh, the local health department can suggest, they can write press releases, they can do whatever, all that you know, kind of stuff, but they cannot mandate anymore. That, that mandate has to come from your commissioners. It has to come from here in LaPorte County. They have to decide what is best for your health based on the recommendations, whether they're going to listen to um, their local health experts or not. So, again, if you think that the local health department is not acting appropriately or they're not doing enough, whatever your belief is here, understand that the laws have changed even just in the last year, in the last couple months, about what local health departments can do. And it was changed largely because of the pandemic. So we've been talking today, and I've so much appreciated your calls, your texts, your Facebook comments about how Governor Herrick Holcomb is doing. And uh, again, I think there's a lot to praise. For me, there's a little bit of disappointment in some things, but I also acknowledge that it's hard to be an elected official right now. Um, it's taken a lot of good leadership right now. Uh, we're in a really weird time, not only with the pandemic, uh, we're in a really weird time in the economy. We're in a really weird time where it just seems like everyone's angry. And so I encourage all of our local elected officials, A, be encouraged, but B, lead well, lead strong, lead, lead wise. We're all counting on you. So we're going to be back on Friday here on Sound Off. We're going to talk to Mark Schreiber about the Laporte City Parks Department, what's happening there. We're going to talk about the Civic Auditorium events coming up there. Any questions you might have about that kind of stuff, we'd love to talk to you about it. Love to get your opinion. Hey, be good to yourself, be good to others, and keep it here on 96.7 The Eagle. Thank you for joining us and voicing your opinion on this edition of Sound Off. The views on Sound Off are those of the host or callers and do not represent the opinion of 96.7 The Eagle. Spoon River Media, LLC.